Hello everyone and welcome again to our morning worship and prayer. And as we devote these next several minutes to God in worship through song, I would like to read this verse for us. In Psalm 29, in verse 1, it says, Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. When I looked at this, I realized that ascribe or to ascribe means to acknowledge or to recognize. And so when we recognize how glorious God is, how strong and mighty God is, when we acknowledge the dignity and the honor due God's name, our response would be genuine, devoted, and wholehearted worship. Well, that's true, isn't it? When, when we meet somebody of great importance, we give them the respect and the focused attention that they deserve. So now, as we worship God, let's think about who God is, His goodness, His greatness, His faithfulness, His holiness. That's what will give us the ability to honor Him in the way that He deserves as we worship Him through this song. Lord, we are grateful that your presence is always with us. Thank you for your present presence who's always there to support us. Lord, there to encourage us, give us faith when we need it, and to 
help us, Lord, to move forward. And so, God, we acknowledge your presence in our midst. Even wherever we are at this moment, we fix our eyes on you, Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, again, welcome to our morning worship and prayer. And we hope that this has been um, helpful for you in your walk with God and has inspired you to even um, grow even more no, in your relationship with Him. Our text for today is in Psalm 78. Um, it is a song written by a songwriter in the time of David. His name uh, is Asaph. And in verse 1, it says, Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from, the ch from their children. But tell them or tell to them the coming, tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob, and appointed the law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep His commandments, and that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. This is God's word for us today. Now, Pastor Bong Navarro, a good friend of mine of Victory Kaloakan or from Victory Kaloakan, gave me this shirt a few months ago. And so, if I'm not mistaken, this logo is the first iteration of our campus ministry logo in the 90s called Youth on Fire. From that pro, from this point, it evolved to the one that uh, is like an oval-shaped logo uh, with Youth on Fire on it. And perhaps many of you, you're familiar with that because it um, was our logo for a campus ministry for several years. And then it transitioned to Every Nation Campus and Every Nation Youth. And then years after that, we became Lifebox, or we became known as Lifebox. And now our campus... Uh, the campus ministry of our church is called Every Nation Campus. Now, logos may have changed, and our campus ministry name has changed as well. But please know that our passion and our calling still remains the same. As a church family, we are called to reach the next generation. But again, it's important for us to understand and to know why. Why should we do that? Why should we reach the next generation? Well, from the passage that we just read, we see that it is a concern for God because God cares for multiple generations. He cares for our generation, yes, but He cares also for the generation prior to us and even the, the generations after, after us. He desires not just for the current generations to know Him, but also the next one and the next one and the next after that. In fact, in this psalm alone, not only that is, does it pertain to two generations, but in verses 5 and 6, we see that it speaks of five generations. The fathers, their children, the generation after that, the children to be born after them, and then their children. So you can see here that the desire of God is for multiple generations. Now to them, the psalmist says that God gave a command to tell the next generation about God. And so you may be young right now and you're thinking, well, this is only for my parents or those who are OGs. Guess what? Not many years from now, you will be the older generation to the next. I was just having a phone call with a friend of mine, you know, before we had this shoot. And we were wondering what happened to those years because we used to be very young. Now, it's not anymore. So this command, whether you're young right now, this command is for you. Because you will always, you will be an older generation to somebody. So question is, what if we don't do it? What if we don't heed to the command of God to tell the next generation about Him? Verse 8 gives us a picture of what happens if we don't do that. It says there, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. That's what happened to their fathers. And so God does not want generations, whether young or old or future generation, to be far from Him. His desire, His heart is for every generation. In fact, the, it is the ploy of the enemy, on the other hand, to sway generations away from God. You know, there's this article that I read um, recently 
Um, it is about the com you know some commercial commercial groups targeting young teens um, into luring them into the commercial sex industry. In fact, they said in that article, 70% of teens right now get exposed to pornographic materials in the internet even without them looking it. And so can you imagine, um, a lot of young people are, as young as they are, sobrang may exposed na sila sa mga bagay nito. No? And this is actually, this is not a coincidence, this is intentional. This is not just a way for these companies or these individuals to to earn money or to proliferate their content. But please know that this is also the work of the enemy. See, the enemy does not want the next generation to get to know God. And they believe, these this people, these institutions, this, they believe that if they hook children, if they hook them as young as they are, they, became, they become long-term patrons of pornographic sites. That is why we need to do our part. If the enemy is doing wor working double time to sway the next generation away from God, we as a church should also be vigilant in leading the next generation to Him. We need to take that call, and that call seriously, because we know God loves multiple generations. God loves the next generation. So how do we do that? Verse 1 gives us the first step. It says there, listen to God's word. So in other words, we ourselves need to grow in our relationship with God. Guys, we cannot give what we don't have, right? We all know that. We too need to grow in our walk with the Lord so that we can help other generations to walk in theirs or to grow in theirs. As parents, I hope that we understand, for those of you who are watching this and you're parents, I hope that we understand we are not supposed to subcontract discipleship of our children to our kids' ministry and our campus ministry. We are grateful that in our church, we have kids ministry, we have kids church, we also have campus ministers. But please know that we are the primary disciplers of our children. Let me repeat that. You and I as parents, I'm a parent as well, we are the primary disciplers of our children. So in order for us to be effective in it, we too need to grow in our walk with God so that our children will not just hear about God through us, they will also see it. See, one of the things that um, uh, when I talk to some kids right now in kids' church, that's what they say. Some, the challenge that they have is that, yes, they hear it in, in school or in, in church, but they're not hearing it as much our, in, our, in our home. And so again, my prayer is for all of you who are parents, who are watching this, may God's grace be with you. May God's presence be with you. May God's wisdom be upon you to teach um, you know, God to your kids also to live out our faith so that our kids will get to know who God is. Amen? Now, this is true not just for biological moms and dads, huh? but this is true also for us who are spiritual fathers and mothers. So whether you are a tito, you're a tita, a lolo, a lola, an ate, or a kuya, please grow in your walk with God so that we can help others grow in theirs. Next one is to teach God's Word. It says there several times in that psalm to teach the to tell, to speak about, you know, about the commands of God and what God has done, the, the statutes, the, the testimonies of God. So we are to teach God's word persistently and creatively. I'm always impressed, actually, when I talk to parents in church and when we would interact and they would creatively, or actually they would speak about how they would creatively teach their kids about God and His word. See, some of them would, uh, you know, would even... Uh, have those times of devotions, prayer times with their kids. They would regularly do that so that they can instill a passion and a desire for God and for His Word to their kids. Some parents would um, use some regular conversations as jumping boards to tell their kids about the truths from God's Word, whether it's talking about school or maybe an answered prayer, a new car that they got, a new home that they got, or um, some friends that they met. So they use those opportunities to process with their kids, yes, but also to tell them about who God is and what God's Word says. How they would also demonstrate, you know, um, uh, they read the Bible, they pray, they attend church, they become part of a community of believers is um, a reflection, a 
powerful reflection of the Bible. And so I hope that we would utilize that as, as well. I'm sure all of us can, you know, think of uh, people as well, right? Who sowed God's word or seeds of faith in, our, in us that helped us in our walk with God. Personally, when I reflect, you know, I'm grateful for my grandmother who sowed God's word when I was young. Bata pa lang, as in, um, you know, every chance she gets, she would sow those God's word in me. I'm grateful also for my, also for my parents who um, prayed and led us, introduced us to having church community, a Christian church community. I'm super grateful for my friends and classmates, uh, especially when I was in college, who shared about their testimonies and about God and about Jesus and about and, and invited me to church. Even though on many occasions I was just there for the food, I was just there for some uh, whatever uh, relationships and I was just there. Yeah, they were, so oftentimes I would just reject them. But I'm grateful for them because apart from the seeds that they've sown, I wouldn't be here. And we have all those people, right? We have those people in mind. Now, it's our turn. It's our turn to sow prayer. It's our turn to invite people to church. It's our turn to tell the next generation about what God has done for us. It's our turn to teach others about what Jesus said and what Jesus did. So that, as the psalmist, as Asaph said, verse 6, it says, They will know God's word. Verse 7, they will trust in God. Verse 8, they will walk with God. And verse 6 again, they will tell other generations about Him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are grateful for this time that you've given us, reminding us of your heart for multiple generations. But not just that, but Lord, for giving us, uh, Lord, a charge as your church. It's not because we are victory, Lord, that we do this. We do this because this is your very, this is your heart. And Lord, we respond to that. And so I, I pray, help us all, Lord, to grow in our walk with you. Whether we are a parent here or, uh, Lord, whether we are grandparents, whether we are titos or titas, whether we are, Lord, uh, single professionals in church, whether we're college students, Lord, whether we're high school, Lord, whatever station in life we're in right now, help us to grow in our walk with you so that we can help others also in their walk with you. God, thank you that you are doing a work in us. You're continually changing us and transforming us. And we pray, Lord, that we, 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 we ask, Lord, that you would continue that work so that we can be effective witnesses to our generation and even to the next generations. Father, some of us here, we're praying for loved ones to get saved. Some of us, we have loved ones who are unchurched or we don't see in church yet. Lord, we lift them up to you. Even now, we sow prayers. If that is you, just think about them in your mind and and right now, so say their names, say them individually. Lord, we just pray for these men and women. We pray for our, our fathers, our moms, Lord, our sisters, our brothers, Lord, who are not yet in a right relationship with you. We sow prayers right now, believing that you're the one who's going to work in their hearts. And Lord, um, your loving kindness will lead them to repentance as well. For some of us who are parents or grandparents, Father God, give us the grace to faithfully, compassionately, courageously, consistently teach our children and our grandchildren your word. To tell them about what you've done in us, the wonders, the testimonies, Lord God, the answered prayers, the change that you've done in us, but at the same time to teach them about your word and who you are. God, help us to be effective witnesses for you to the next generation, Lord God. And God, again, we thank you that we are, Lord, this is, this is for us, not just for the old ones, not just for the advancing years, but even to whatever generation we belong, Lord. We will be mentors and we will be spiritual fathers and mothers to the next ones. And so, God, Lord, we pray, let greater compassion rise in us. Let the courage, Lord, be upon us. We will not withhold your word, Lord God, and hide them, but instead we will tell them. And so, God, give us opportunities, even this week, Lord, even today, Lord. I pray, let there be opportunities, divine opportunities for my brothers and sisters, Lord, to speak about you in their offices and even in their homes. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I will not fear when the waters rise. I will not fear the walk through fire. I will not.
Thank you once again for joining us today, and I hope that this has been a blessing to you. In fact, before you go about your day, I just want to pray this prayer for us. In Numbers 6, 24 to 26, it says, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace. May God's peace, may His grace, may His favor be upon you today. In Jesus' name, amen.